What up, y'all? Knowledge the Raven, two four six eight. Knowledge the Prophet, whatever it is, the names is. Y'all know how I start the video off, cause a lot of people know me as a lot of names, and I answer to all those names. The names really don't mean nothing to me. It's more that you know who I am, you know, and what the message says. I'm not acknowledging myself as anybody that I'm not, you know. I know I'm just a man, just giving the message, you know, as a mere vessel. So. When I bring the message, you know, it, I always give that name there because that's what my YouTube platform is geared towards. That's the name that I have. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, or Twitter, whatever it is. The name still is the same. So today, man, we're going to talk about the den of thieves. But first of all, we're going to go into the Father's Heart Ministry and what it says. Okay, the father says today, war a good warfare with the prophecies that have gone out over you. The enemy assaults faith with many contradictions to my promises in your life, but those contradictions will vanish away as you arm yourself with the words spoken over you by the prophets and the sure and certain realities of the scripture that ever gives you solid ground on which to resist the enemy and see him come to nothing in your life. You are not without weapons wherewith, <clears throat> wherewith to go forth to battle, says the Father. I am with you always and will never suffer you to falter or fail as you keep your confidence and your trust in me. Let the faith that I have given you, given to every man, be the measure by which you assess what happens next in your life. Size up the assault of hell with the measure of faith I have planted deep inside of you. And you will see that Satan is the grasshopper and you are the giant going forth to demolish and destroy all the works of the devil. My faith is walking in you. My faith is talking in you. My faith is doing for you what I would do in an instant if I were standing in front of you. Accept this day your miracle outcome. Embrace this day new hope for total, complete, and sudden deliverance from all the fiery projectiles of the enemy hurled against you. This is your portion, says God, and your righteousness is of me. Man, in a nutshell, I mean, what that's saying is you, you overpower the enemy. You overpower those very things that, that try and come against you, that try to stop you. When you are seeking the word and obeying God's commands and doing what uh, he tells you to do. God has given so much to you. He gives so much to his children to use against the enemy because the enemy has no power over you. We talk about that all the time, but a lot of people are operating in the wrong spirit. I asked a question. I said, um, when Jesus comes back, would he be pleased with the way that we are living? And when I say we, I'm talking about mankind. Would Jesus be pleased with the way that the church is ran? Is the church not ran like a den of thieves again? People wanting to, you know, or I wouldn't even say wanting. The only way that they'll do anything in the church nowadays is if someone pays them. Like it's a job. Like it's your job to uh, use the gift that God is giving you to pour into the people. Now, I do understand that, um, you know, when it comes to church, yes, an offering, you know, if someone wants to offer, then they may offer, but it shouldn't be like a marketplace again. It shouldn't be like where, you know, uh, you feel like you're pouring into something like you, you're basically the boss of the ones that's giving the message to you because it's like you're paying your way into a club. You know, oh, you give your tithes and your offerings. And I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just saying. Like, does it not seem that way all over again that, you know, you got to pay your tithes and offerings so you can receive your blessings? And, and even in the word, it talks about it in Deuteronomy, how they pray on your sinful ways. They pray on your sinful ways. And then basically you're paying for a feel good sermon because you're hoping for a blessing of Whatever you're pointing to, they're like, okay, well, if you give this much, you give this. Or they may not even give a price, but they say, if you give this, then you will get back this. Why is all the words that's being preached all the time about if you give, then 
you will receive this. No, it says give and it shall be given. It doesn't say that you should give all of your money every week to, uh, you know, a church organization. I'm, I'm more like, you know what? If you want to give, then that's cool. If not, that's cool too. You know what I'm saying? There's many ways to give. You can give your time. You can tithe your time. It's not always about financial gain. And it's turned into a, a, a den of thieves or a, a den of robbers. And I'll show you in the word where it says it. Well, we'll go to this one real quick. Uh, here it is right here. What does the Bible say about... What does the Bible say? Oh, well, I don't want to do that one. <laughs> I was going to go there. A den of robbers. Check this out. Is a den of robbers a place where robbers go to steal or a place where robbers go to hide? Perhaps one of the most famous actions attributed to Jesus in the Gospels of the New Testament, the account of the so-called cleansing of the temple is one that most Christians devout or otherwise are familiar with. Theologians and historians have been picking apart this story for centuries, but my purpose here is not to give a detailed analysis of the story itself. Instead, I want to focus on one of the more famous lines from the story uttered or spoken by Jesus, that the Jerusalem temple had become a den of thieves forward slash robbers. To give a brief background, the story takes place during Jesus' last week of life in the Gospels of Mark, Matthew, and Luke. The Gospel of John also relates the story but places it in Jesus' ministry, most likely for thematic reasons. Most historians agree that the event most likely occurred near the end of Jesus' life. Indeed, Mark tells us explicitly that Jesus' actions in the temple led directly to his arrest and execution. And when the chief priests and scribes heard Jesus' pronouncements against the temple, they kept looking for a way to kill him. They started looking for a way to kill Jesus because Jesus was coming against their money. You know what I'm saying? He was coming against what they was doing. They was, they was you know, uh, in their... Uh, Selling stuff, turned it into basically a marketplace, turned it into robbing people of their blessings. And Jesus was angry. He was frustrated. So he began to flip over tables. And, and he's, like, he's like, you know, how dare you turn my father's house into a place of financial gain? How dare you turn this into a job where you can collect taxes on it for the people. How dare you do that? How dare you rob these people? How dare you rob my people? And so they didn't have anything to, you know, really kill Jesus for. So they plotted against him. They had to plot against him to get him out of there because he was waking people up. Jesus was waking people up. People were beginning to be woke about what was going on. And so they plotted a way to get him up out of there. They plotted a way to, to knock him off, if you will, to kill him. And the way that they did that was what? <laughs> they said he was a, a blasphemer against the, uh, the, the word, the word of God and, and what their, their scripture said, that he wasn't who he said he was. And so, you know, back then, that right there, that <laughs> you, you get knocked off of that. I mean, you get knocked off of anything back then. I mean, if you was an adulterer, uh, you you were a, a whoremonger, as they call it, uh, a thief, a murderer. It was some things that happened to you back then, boy, that you wouldn't want to happen to you today. So my point is, is would you, would, would Jesus be pleased? Would the Father in heaven be pleased? with you. Ask yourself that question. Would he be pleased with you right now 
with your actions and everything that you're doing, would the Father be pleased with you? I'm not saying that if you was to die today, would you go to heaven? We've all heard that. Would the Father be pleased with your lifestyle right now? Ask yourself that question. Would he be pleased? And and that's, that's to the people that's in the church, the people that's on the outside, that's to even the ones that are running the churches. Would the Father be pleased with what you're doing? Ask yourself that question. And be honest with yourself. Because you're the only one that can be honest with yourself. Nobody can be honest for you. You only can be honest with yourself and honest with God. You got to think about that, man. If you have the, when you have the finances or whatever it is, me personally, I feel that you should give back to the people. You want a church or what have you, man, work for it, work towards it. And buy your church or whatever it is. So that way, nobody's responsible for your bills. You know, you I mean, it should be paid for within itself, but nobody's responsible for that. You won't have to ask anybody, hey, uh, you know, we need to do this. We need to sow into this ministry. We need to sow into this because the lights need to be cut on or we need this, we need that. If you, When God gives you everything that you need, he gives you a way in. You don't rob anybody afterwards, man. You're already getting a tax write-off for everybody that's coming inside of the church. So what do you need to gain from their tithes now or their offerings now? In, in my opinion. I mean, I, all, all organizations are around like that. And I'm not picking on it. I'm just saying, would the father be pleased if he came and took you right now? Would he be pleased? Another thing, can you take it with you? Can you take it with you? Whatever you have, man, it says give and it shall be given. So we really supposed to be giving things away, you know, and not asking for anything back in return, but to just say, give praise to the father, you know, give praise to God because he allowed me to give to you. And because of that, I don't want any recognition for it. I just want you to give praise to God because that's giving people a sense of hope. That's giving them a sense of hope to knowing that God hears their prayers. You know, I, I definitely don't want to be on here too long, but I just want to drop that nugget on you, man. You know, if you're a minister if, uh, to the gospel, if you're a minister of music, um, you know, if you can play instruments, you can sing, and whatever it is, whatever you're doing for the church, you shouldn't be paid for that. It's not a job. Those are your gifts. Those are your talents. This is not like going, it shouldn't be treated like you're going to a concert. This is not a concert. You know what I'm saying? And even if it, you do have a concert, it shouldn't be something that someone has to pay for it. You have the finances already in your pocket to supply everything, then do that. And you know what? You can just say, you know, we're taking donations. We're taking donations. We, we sold into this. We did this. You know, we're not asking for much, but if we're taking donations. And if people want to donate, then they'll donate. But first of all, man, give back to the community. Give back to your people. So then your people will begin to see that, or, you know, the Lord will begin to show them, invest in him or invest in her, whatever it is. Man, like I said, I didn't want to be before y'all too long, but just ask yourself that question. Because that's something that, we all should uh, ask ourselves, not just for the church organization, but just for your life, period. Would the Father be pleased with what you're doing right now at this point in time? I'm not saying you're going to be perfect, but there are some things that all of us have done. Would the Father be pleased with us? I know there are some things that I've done that I will never do again. You know, there's some things that I'm not even pleased with what I've done, but I know that I'm forgiven and I will never do them again. And I've asked for forgiveness and I know that I'm forgiven. And you can do the same thing. Confess your sins to the Lord and be forgiven and walk in the way, a new way. Just obey his commands and his teachings. It's not too late. You're still here. You're still living. Do that. I love y'all. Blessings to y'all. Knowledge.